I'm Andrea Klein-Thomas, reporter with CBS New York here at the Fifth International Vatican Conference. I'm joined now by Dr. Lori Glimcher. Thank you so much for being here. I know that you attend a lot of cancer conferences. What would you say makes this conference different? I think uh, this conference is all about collaboration. And I personally think that's how we're going to solve the world's biggest health challenges. I mean, just just take COVID-19, for example. It's amazing that scientists were able to produce incredibly effective vaccines in a matter of months because they built on the existing basic knowledge of virology and vaccines that have been developed for viruses. And then they were able to translate that into new vaccines with new technologies. And now that we're all learning about the mRNA technology, uh, at Dana-Farber, we're thinking, how can we use that technology to uh, create cancer vaccines? So to me, it's all about collaboration and not competition. Scientists work together, they share their knowledge, and they really tear down the walls of competition in order to foster collaboration. And to me, that's how you can best do the most good for our patients. Absolutely. This last year has taught us so much. I just want to elaborate a little bit more on the mRNA technology and how it could possibly relate to cancer treatment moving forward or how this research, how we've seen how research has been able to have these great outcomes. Tell us what this, how does that impact your work? Well, I think that new technology for cancer vaccines is very important. And the first generation of those cancer vaccines will likely be therapeutic vaccines. And in fact, at Dana-Farber, Dr. Kathy Wu has already generated therapeutic vaccines that are being tested now in clinical trials for glioblastoma, for ovarian cancer, for kidney cancer, and for melanoma. And we'll see um, how effective they are I think cancer vaccines will work well together with other ways to activate the immune system. For example, the checkpoint blockers or CAR T cells. Ultimately, I think we would all love to have a world where we can vaccinate our children against cancer. We're a ways off from doing that, but wouldn't it be wonderful to have our kids go to the doctor, they get their vaccinations for measles and mumps, rubella, and then they get their cancer vaccines as well. Wow, that would be revolutionary, right? Um, just shifting gears um, ever so slightly, how do you shift the compensation model to pay providers based on patient outcomes and not just on volume or you know, the therapies that they provide or the procedures that they provide? How do you think that could happen? The best and most effective way, which is cost effective as well, to overcome cancer is if we could prevent it in the first place. And that's something we're very focused on at Dana-Farber now. Only 25% of cancers present at stage one. Stage one cancers, can largely be cured, but 75% of our patients don't come to us until the cancer has spread. And it's more difficult than to cure those cancers or to treat them. So I think we need to find out more about which patients are at a greater risk of developing cancer. And that could be because they have inherited gen genetic mutations like BRCA1 or whether they have other lifestyle factors, for example, obesity is now uh, known to be a risk factor for cancer or tobacco use, of course, is a risk factor. And, and age is the biggest risk factor for developing cancer. And if you've already had one cancer, then you're more likely to develop a second cancer. So we need to develop better screening and early detection strategies so that we can get in there earlier. We can intervene sooner at cancer's earliest stage when it is most treatable. Right. Well, Dr. Glimcher, thank you so much for all of the work that you're doing um, on cancer research and, and treatment. Uh, we look forward to what's ahead. Thank you for joining us.